Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Tonight we're going to continue with our study of the book of Job, and uh, we're going to go pick up where we left off last time. Uh, we completed chapter 19, so we're going to start with chapter 20, verse 1. Uh, if you have not seen the previous uh, episodes, uh, please go back and watch them. Uh, it's, it would be very, very helpful to you if you had the whole thing in context. Uh, but um, we may have to go back and like repeat ourselves as far as laying out the basic premise of it if you're just uh, starting tonight with us. Uh, first, let me ask Brother Eric to introduce himself and say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. It's good to be here. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's me, the homo. Okay, back to you, guys, Brother Luke. Yeah, please, everybody, uh, maybe you're already subscribed to my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, but I hope you'll also subscribe to Brother Eric's channel on YouTube. His channel is Dehalmo, D-E-H-A-L-L-M-O. All right, we're going to begin now with... I'm going to read the KJV first because I am a KJV firstist. And then uh, whenever it, I think it might be helpful, I'll look at another translation. The one I like uh, is uh, the Amplified because it's not only modern English, but it's also amplifies it and expounds upon it. So sometimes I can find it to be very helpful. So I'll read chapter 20 first here. I mean, first I'll read chapter 20 in the KJV. And what we've seen over the last uh, few chapters is kind of a, an argument going back and forth between Job and his three so-called friends. Three men, men come to visit him after he's had his uh, health and wealth and family destroyed. And he's uh, and um, it seems like the friends should be there to console him and help him. But all they're doing is accusing and condemning him and blaming him and so they're going back and forth. A friend will make a speech, and then Job in the next chapter will give a speech as an answer. And so now we're in chapter 20. We have uh, one of his friends called Jophar the uh, Namathite. Okay. Chapter 20, verse 1 says, Then answered Zophar the Namathite and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, and for this I make haste. I have heard the check of my reproach, and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. Knowest thou not this old since man was placed upon the earth, that, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds yet he shall perish forever like his own dung they which have seen him shall say where is he he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found yea he shall be chased away as a vision of the night the eye also which saw him shall see him no more neither shall his place any more behold him his children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of asp within him. He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of asps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he labored for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be, and he shall not rejoice therein. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away a house which he builded not, 
Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him, and it shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. Okay, as we saw in the previous chapters, when his friends make his speech against him, it is eloquent. And if we were to uh, base truth upon eloquence of speech, we would be really impressed with this finger pointing at Job and and condemnation of Job and blaming him, saying he's the cause for all of his own problems. And uh, and yet we know from the previous chapters we've studied with the accusations and then Job's responses and studying Job's attitude about God and, and his, he said in one place, he says, uh, my sins God has put in a bag and sewn it shut. So we know that Job loves God, his faith is faithful, his faith remains strong in God is love, and he's accepting whatever God is doing to him. He doesn't think, he doesn't realize it's not God doing to him, doing any of this to him. It's Satan doing it to him. And uh, he did not originally believe that the bad things that happened to him are, are the result of his sinfulness. He didn't believe that. That's what his friends have been saying. They're pointing the finger and saying, you're getting just what you deserve because you are a sinner. And uh, uh, Job didn't believe it. He defended himself. Uh, they started putting doubts in his head in the last few chapters. And he's saying, well, maybe I do deserve this. Uh, but he still, his faith in God, his love for God, and his understanding that his sins, whatever he has done, that God put his sins in a bag and sewed it shut. So... We talked about all that in a previous, uh, the previous chapters, and so that's important for you to understand. We got uh, uh, Brother Nephilim Free joining us now. Uh, hello, brother. Hey, brother. I love your statement of faith. Oh, man, I just love that. I, I was grinning like a cheshire cat when I read that. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad you love it, and uh, I know that you agree with it, and uh, yes, sir, yeah. that's. Uh, you see, brother, I, I was talking to Brother Johnny earlier today uh, about hangouts, and and people take different approaches, and, and their their methodology and hangouts are all a little varied. And I joined, I've joined some of your hangouts and Johnny's and other people's hangouts in the past, and I I can enter the arena, but when I do a hangout, there's really two things that I want to accomplish. One is fellowship. You yeah. see. Uh, the three of us, we agree with the core doctrines of Christianity. We do. And, and, and you cannot have fellowship with uh, with an unbeliever. You know, you're, you're right. It's difficult to have fellowship with people who believe in heretical views. It really is. Yeah. Now, there's a difference between friendship and fellowship. I mean, I have friends who are not believers. I, their friends have been my lifelong friends, and some of them are not believers. Friendship right. is one thing, but fellowship can only exist between people who uh, believe in the basic doctrines of Christianity. I couldn't uh, argue with that. Then the other thing, of course, we want to accomplish, besides the fellowship we can enjoy together, is, uh, is studying and learning together. And, you know, I... Some people think that I'm doing these hangouts to teach, but I'm here just as much to learn. I want to get your guys' uh, attitudes and, and uh, 
understanding of all this too. So that's what I try to accomplish in a hangout, and that's why I restrict it to just believers. And then uh, not only do we agree on the core doctrines in the statement of faith, but we also agree that when we disagree on minor doctrines that we don't hate each other over it. We, we discuss them. You and I have discussed some things uh, over the last few years. We don't necessarily agree on everything, but, but I, we're still in fellowship because we agree on the core doctrines. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's my, I'm just happy you're here. Uh, and uh, say hi to uh, uh, Brother Eric for me, will you? Yeah, will do. Yeah. Greetings, Nephilim free. Hi, how are you? Okay. Good to see you. All right, so now that we have our greetings and salutations and love for each other expressed, um, I know that Eric heard me read the first chapter in the KJV, I mean the 20th chapter in the KJV, and I don't know if you heard it or uh, if you ever want to respond to it all, but let me get your first reaction to chapter 20, and then we'll go over it more carefully in the amplified version. Okay. Uh, either, whoever wants to talk first, go ahead. Well, I didn't get to hear it, I'm afraid. So, um, and I'm not off the top of my head. I can't say I'm real familiar with the twentieth chapter of Job. So, uh, I'm just going to hold my comments and let somebody else speak. Okay. Well, I, I read it all the way through in the KJV, and it's a powerful, powerful condemnation from Zophar, who's supposed to be a friend of Job. The three friends come, and all they're doing is condemning Job and blaming him for his problems. And then the next chapter, of course, Job gives his answer to the friend. And that's the way the last four or five chapters have been going. Uh, uh, we're going to go through it verse by verse after I get my uh, Eric's initial reaction to it. Brother Eric? Well, Brother Luke and uh, Brother Nephilim Free, um, it doesn't appear to me that... Uh, Zophar is directing his condemnation at this point in this chapter directly to Job. Uh, everything it appears that uh, Zophar stated uh, in chapter 20 appears to be biblical uh, according to scriptures. And uh, that's what I'm seeing here so far. Well, I remember that was your reaction uh, the, to the last friend. Uh, you, and, and it is true. We did we did conclude that uh, if we took took it out of context, out of context of the the first couple of chapters where the foundation was laid, we know that that Satan goes before God, and uh, God says, "Well, what have you considered Job?" and and uh, and Satan says, "Well, the only re reason Job loves you is because you, he's so blessed." And they make an agreement that God says, "Okay, go ahead and do these things to him, and, and find out. You'll 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 see he does love me, and it's not just because of the, his blessings." So these series of things are done. He loses his family and his wealth, and he gets boils from the soles of his feet to the, to the top of his head, and he and then he's 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 distraught, of course, and then his three so-called friends come and they repeatedly start blaming him. But what we know that Job doesn't even know, that his friends don't even know, is that God's not doing it to him, uh, Satan is, and we also know it's not being done because as a um, retribution for his sin. It's, uh, that's not the cause for it at all. Uh, so there's a misunderstanding. Now, when Zophar is um, ex uh, accusing, you said it's more generic, it's just broadly against sinners. But we know that when Job gives his answer in the next chapter, he's going to take it personally. He thinks Job Far is saying this all about him. And so, uh, yeah, it is true that when people sin, they're going to get consequences. It's the law of reaping and sowing, you know. You do a lot of bad things in your life. You become an alcoholic and you, you smoke and you lie, cheat, and steal. You're going to get bad health and bankruptcy and, and imprisonment. All kinds of bad things happen because of a result of our sinning. But in this case, that's not what's causing Job's problems. And also, the misunderstanding uh, here is Job knows that his salvation is because is based upon his faith in God, his trust in God to, to be a savior, and he knows that his sins are already dealt with. He says, my sins have been put in a bag and sewn shut. So we have a really uh, New Testament theology right in this. We've discussed that in the previous chapters. So let me get Brother uh, Evan, Brother uh, 
Now, do you want me to call you Nephilim Free tonight, or you can call me Evan? That's fine. Okay, um, I'll call, you, call I, your brother Evan. I'm not, uh, you know, real studied on the Book of Job. I have an idea of a, 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 a basic understanding of what it's about. Um, I, I, as I understand it, uh, Satan is the one that does all this. Uh, his his friends try to convince him God is punishing him for his sin. If if I'm not correct, isn't it? Isn't that correct? And uh, and, and and he understands that that's not true. And but I, I'm not real well studied on the book of Job. Uh, the book of Job chapter 38 is something I'm pretty familiar with because it has so many statements relating to creation in it, you know, uh, and the flood. But uh, I really i am not real well studied on Job, so I'm really learning more than commenting here in your hangout tonight. All right, brother. Well, everything you said about it uh, in a broad sense, this is all correct. Uh, but the thing that uh, probably should surprise a lot of people if they've been following this study, and even surprises me because I'm studying it so uh, uh, closely now, I'm seeing that Job's faith in, for his salvation, it's pure faith just like ours. Mm -hmm. He's not expecting to get saved because of his goodness. He, he knows that he, he has sinned, but God's dealt with him because of his faith. So we established that in a few previous chapters. So when you get time, you can go back and watch the other uh, broadcasts uh, leading yeah. up to this. But that's the thing that I found really that made me really happy about this study. Uh, we'll go through this now a verse at a time. I'm going to go over to the Amplified because it's a little bit interesting how they expand expound upon these thoughts. And... Uh, We'll go through it a verse at a time and get your reaction to it. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about the Amplified and some of the modern translations is that they, they before each chapter, and sometimes before each like paragraph, they'll have a, like a subtitle. And the title the, they gave to this one is, Zophar says, the triumph of the wicked is short. And as Brother Eric said, this is a, this is a true doctrine. But the problem is this, this does not apply in Job's case. Hmm. Because uh, because of uh, you know the cause of his problems is not because of his wickedness, so it says, uh, verse one. Then Zophar the Namathite answered and said, "Therefore my disquieting thoughts make me answer because of the uneasy easiness that is within me. I have heard the reproof which insults me, but the spirit of my understanding makes me answer." Do you not know this from the old days, since the time that man was placed on the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the godless is only for a moment? All right, so let me let me get you both to respond to that. Uh, first of all, we have the context that we now understand about Job and what's going on, but just as a doctrine in its, by itself. Uh, give me um, the passage again uh, that you're reading. I'm, I'm finding it in my online King James. Um, which which passage was it that we were just now reading? Dead mind, dead mind. Uh, is I am I not heard? Can you hear me? Okay, Job 20. Look, Brother Luke's mic is still off. Uh, can you guys hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, all this time I'm t talking to you, I didn't realize my mic was off, Brother. Um, chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. Oh, okay. Take a look at that. I'll ask you while you're looking at it to have Brother Eric respond to it. Okay, yeah. I see it. Okay, I see it, uh, Brother Luke. It was very subtle, and that's why I missed it. But his condemnation is directed to Job in those first five verses. Okay, uh, but what do you think of the premise that he lays out? That the that the um, the wicked they can prosper for a short time, but it's just short lived. Of course, all that is uh, biblical. I would say so too, because uh, uh, God reigns for e forever and ever, and so uh, since uh, the you know the, the even Satan knows his time is short, right? So the lifespan and and the scriptures say you know the life of a man is but a, a drop in a bucket, 
So uh, how long is uh, the, the reign of the wicked, if we could call it that? You know, they're triumphing and glorying amongst themselves and, and defend their humanism and their pride. Uh, it can only, it, it's nothing in comparison to the eternity of the kingdom of God and to uh, God's plan for, for the, the saved and his eternal uh, kingdom to, uh, in, the, in the world to come. So certainly, uh, you know, by comparison, their, their reign or triumph, whatever, whatever the, 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 uh, the, the, the wicked might see as a, a victorious time for themselves is absolutely nothing. It's a sliver of time. It's, it's, it's infinitesimally small. Yeah, I would say that uh, um, it's small uh, even if they get uh, three score and ten years, and they, if they live seventy years, and they and they they their entire seventy years, they don't have uh, the consequences. Well, we know that it's still short lived because you know seventy years is nothing compared to eternity. But most of the time, though, the the people they will get, suffer consequences. Uh, before their lifespan runs out, it catches up with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, um, like they th they think this is what's happened to Job. Mm -hmm. They're saying all these things that have happened to you is because of your sin. And and uh, Job, this is another thing we learned earlier that Job is a young man compared to these three friends. They're elders compared to him. I'm think I'm guessing that he must only be like you know 35 or 40 years old at the most. Uh, uh, we learned that from an earlier chapters. In the past, I always thought that he was an, an old man. Okay, uh, Brother Eric? Uh, I wasn't aware of that. I must have missed that uh, session where we discovered that Job was younger than his friends. That's uh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, I thought you were there all along, but okay. Now let me go on, and I'm going to read this. And if you want to, you can follow me in the KJV if you like. But I read the KJV first. Now I'm going to read it in the Amplified, starting with verse 6. And he continues on with this tirade against Job. And he says, Though his pride reaches the heavens and his head touches the clouds, yet he perishes forever like his own refuse. Those who have seen him will say, Where is he? He flies away like a dream and cannot be found. Yes, he is chased away like a vision of the night. The eye which saw him sees him no longer. Neither does his accustomed place behold him any longer. Oh, I'll pause there for your reaction to that. Wow. Uh, just more of the same. Re repeating, uh, you know, that uh, the... the uh, those those who are proud and haughty uh, and uh, and do uh, do and teach evil or wh whatever you might want to call them the wicked that their 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 time is short and uh, they might see it as great and glorious but it, it, in effect it is nothing so yeah, I just see more of the same just different wording saying the same kind of thing. Uh, Brother Evan, I'd like for, to get your reaction to the the language, the uh, uh, the the three friends that come to correct Job. Uh, each one of them makes their speeches against him, and then he makes a speech as his answer back to each of them. Mm -hmm. But their speeches are eloquent, mm -hmm. and 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 some it's filled with some truth. But some some things are not correct, particularly in the context of what's happening to Job. And I, I've compared them in the past to some of the people I've seen who are the televangelists, uh, the authors, the people who are famous today, like MacArthur, Piper, Washer, Car Car Carter Conlon. They're eloquent. Yes. They're orators, and they speak with passion and eloquence. But People are caught up in the drama of their speech. I see. Paul, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. He, he was not eloquent in his speech. And so we don't want to get too captured by someone's eloquence. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, that's a very good insight, in fact. Very good. Um, in fact, your, your insight is, is very excellent. It shows you the intelligence you bring to, to, to the word when you read it. That is, uh, everything you said is so true. Uh, it, it's always those who... Um, it, it, it seems those who uh, um, have wrong ideas, uh, but but are in, in, they they love to mix 
they they sound so uh, wise in what they say, and they they'll often state many true things, and then but their conclusion that they come to is often wrong, and they can state many true things, and then say, see, look what I told you is true, and you think back, oh yeah, I remember he said this, and that was true, and that was true, and that was true. Oh, okay. So what your final conclusion? That must be true. See that that's so I you might be seeing a little of that here. I think that's what you're alluding to that they're 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 they're, they're naming off some very eloquent and very eloquent speech, some certain truths about the wicked and about their time being short and whatnot. But what they're really trying to convey, maybe to Job, is is a wrong idea, and they're using all these truthful things to get that false point across. Is that what you're pointing to? The, yeah, exactly, and and uh, I, I know that you appreciate this uh, uh, this point that I just made because you see it every day, okay. every day that you are debating against atheists. Some of them uh, they they present their arguments uh, with passion, and and some of them the way things they way you present is really quite stupid, obviously. But but many of them they seem to have these logical arguments and stuff. But uh, and people can get per, easily get persuaded and caught up in that. But it's all based on 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 fraud. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. I do see that a lot when I debate uh, evolutionists and atheists about. Uh, you know about uh, the existence of God or the logic of atheism. I I, I see that uh, there they can be very they some of them like you said are just uh, flat you know, the, the arguments they make are completely ignorant. But some of them are very eloquent and come across as very educated, very smart, like they really know what they're talking about. And they'll mix a lot of true things in with what they say, and then they come then they present their false conclusion to you and say, see all that I've said, I'm telling you the truth. And the conclusion is what's wrong. But you, but people who don't know better are apt to believe what the conclusion because they heard so many good, true things stated so well, leading up to it. And that that's called um, that, that's, a, that's a way of um, uh, there's a word for for doing that. And I can't think of the the way of arguing. There's a word for actually doing that sort of thing. But yeah, I, I see that very same thing here. Uh, you know, use a lot of true things and then give them the false conclusion and say, see. Told you so, and 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 people are liable to go. Oh, you must be right. You know. Yeah, I th I think the the word you might be thinking of is sophistry. Yes. Uh, yeah, which and, and and you know you you've spent a lot of time in the past, and and I know that right uh, recently you've been uh, refuting the Calvinists, and I, I think that that's a perfect example example of this. It's kind of like sophistry. They redefine words. I mean, all doesn't mean all. Whosoever doesn't mean whosoever. World doesn't mean world. Even one said the other day when I talked about free will, and they said, "Well, it depends on how you define free will." I'm thinking, right. how absurd! <laughs> I know. You argue over what free will means now. Right, right. it's not free will. It, it's not. It's 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 compatibilistic free will. See, you're not understanding what free will is. That's yes. apparently what it is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go on and read. Uh, Brother Eric, anything to add before I, I read any further? Well, uh, I'm in agreement with the Apostle Paul, who uh, calls it witchcraft. They're bewitching, and it's very compelling, and uh, that's why it's so important to uh, search the scriptures like the, the Bereans did. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Amen. Okay, so uh, you can follow me along. I'm reading the Amplified, or you can read the KJV. I re as I said, I read it the whole entire chapter in the KJV first. Uh, let me see, what uh, verse am I on now? Uh, okay, I think I'm on 9. Oh, no, 10. Verse 10. His sons favor the poor and pay his obligations, and his hands give back his ill-gotten wealth, his bones are full of youthful strength, but it lies down with him in the dust. Though evil and wickedness are sweet in his mouth, and he hides it under his tongue, though he desires it and will not let it go, but holds it in his mouth, yet his food turns to poison in his stomach. It is the venom of vipers within him. Uh, again, uh, you know, we know that uh, I don't know if Job was the richest man in the world. But he was very, very wealthy. 
and and uh, when they're talking about their ill-gotten gains, I'm you know I'm I'm sure in the next chapter when we read Job's response, he's going to take that personally too. Go ahead. This is all setting up for a false premise, I think. It's a, it's a building a straw man argument uh, with sophistry, like you said, and uh, it's just more of the same. It's a it's a carrying on and on. He's going on and on. He's really trying to convince somebody of something, isn't he? I mean, really, with all this eloquent speech and stating these true things, but uh, you know, with his with with the idea that he has in mind, uh, it's, uh, it's it's he's really building up to something. He's really trying to convince somebody, maybe. He is attempting to convince Job of something so that he can justify his own position on the thing. Maybe, like atheists, they often uh, uh, they uh, often argue with Christians about things in such a way as I think there is a secret motive within them. Uh, they want to convert Christians to atheism because they want the satisfaction of wiping the sweat from their brow and saying, Whew, "It must be true after all." Because if this guy thinks he knows the Holy Spirit, and I just convinced him to doubt God, I'm safe. There must not be a God if I can deconvert somebody who says they've experienced the Holy Spirit. Maybe this guy is doing a little of the same thing. His, his long-winded, eloquent speeches and laced with, with truths is maybe in a way of him trying to convince himself to some degree. I mean, this may play a role in what he's doing, that he's trying to convince himself also at the same time that his position is true and to prove to himself that Job's faith alone is not all that's necessary. You know, maybe, maybe something like that going on as well in, in, as, a, as a little a part of what he's doing. Not the, the, maybe not that might not be the, the core motive of what he's doing, but it might be something built into what he's doing at the same time. Yeah, the, uh, uh, if, if you do take the time, I know you're a very, very busy uh, saint, and, and, uh, uh, but if you do take the time to go watch this from the beginning and you uh, see all that's happened before this point here, uh, you'll see that Job's faith is not the same as theirs. Uh, they, they are these like Pharisees and Lordship Salvationists of, t of today, and um, Job's is um, his trust is in the Lord and not in his works. And uh, uh, but they did succeed. Job in the beginning, in his responses back, in his beginning, he, he was defending himself and saying, "No, it's it's not." Be he, um, maybe yes, God is doing this to me, but it's not because I've done something that uh, to being punished. That was his original position. Uh, Job is not privy to the meeting between Satan and God. His the three friends are not privy to that, so none of them really understand what's going on. But they have succeeded in putting doubt in Job about um, what whether Job has done something that caused this, hmm. and doubt Job begins to doubt it the last few chapters. Uh, so they did succeed in that. Brother Eric? Uh, yes, Brother Luke. I remember when we were uh, experiencing uh, that in the previous chapters, and uh, that was very revealing. And uh, that was a great point of view that you had, Evan, uh, considering uh, the wicked and their, uh, their what uh, motivates them. Uh, I uh, don't understand why they think that way personally. Uh, I've never been on their side of the fence, so I, I couldn't speak for them. But I do see in verses 2 and 3 where uh, Zophar uh, very uh, uh, subtly uh, does interject condemnation uh, towards Job. Okay, back to you. Okay, uh, let me respond to your point that you don't understand that motivation that uh, Brother Evan uh, was um, put forth. Uh, my mother taught me that over and over again. I was young. You will not find this in the scriptures, but this is the, the truth that she taught me. And she said, misery loves company. Remember that, misery loves company. I don't know if you ever heard that saying, mm -hmm. but that could be right in the book of Proverbs. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a wise statement and a truth. 
and maybe that's what that's what they're trying to do too. That could be. Uh, I, I personally believe that Romans one tells us that there everyone. Uh, nobody has an excuse because all know that God exists. I think an atheist. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, I'm not going to try to move this off to another subject. But uh, I, I believe there is no such thing as a true atheist. I believe that the creation itself is is revelation of God. That uh, when w they see the world around them, it's astonishing complexity, beauty, and interdependencies, and, and their own intelligence and their ability to speak and use language. I, I think the atheist, at their very core, somewhere down in their soul, knows that God exists. They bury it in unrighteousness, like like Romans says. And so I think that many atheists attempt to uh, uh, deconvert Christians because they think that it will justify their, their denial, but it's a deeply buried psychological thing within them. And, uh, and so I, I, it may be that, uh, that a little of that's going on here. Not that these, these uh, are atheists, but they have maybe they have false theological views, right? And even people with false Christian theological views like Calvinists, uh, use the same kind of techniques uh, to justify them uh, themselves. They they seek justification in their in their arguments, and I th I think I see a sliver of that happening here. That the, these men are not only uh, uh, trying to convince Job of something, but I think there's a little bit of an internal motivation going on here. That they they want to convince them because they want the satisfaction of proving to themselves that their theological ideas are correct and if they can convince Job of it, a man that supposedly has all this strong faith, then oh yeah, I'm right and they can, you know, they can puff on their fingernails and walk off pridefully saying, I'm right as right can be. I, I think there's a little of that happening here too. Yeah, and all true. Uh, let me go on now here, what was the last, okay, uh, verse 15, he swallows his ill-gotten riches but will vomit them up. God will drive them out of his belly. He sucks the poison of vipers, which ill-gotten wealth contains. The viper's tongue slays him. He does not look at the rivers, the flowing streams of honey and butter, to enjoy his wealth. He gives back what he has labored for and attained and, and cannot swallow it down to enjoy it. As to the riches of his labor, he cannot even enjoy them. Uh, so it's um, on one hand we have uh, the the truth that uh, the ill-gotten gains you know you get wealthy through deceit and 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 uh, dis dishonesty and uh, yeah people we know that there's the the law of cause and effect we also know for believers that there's the uh, uh, the principle of um, of um, Discipline that God has for us. What's the word? Not discipline in Hebrews. Uh, uh, chastisement. Uh, so these are principles that you know. Hey, a believer can be chastised, and a believer still is under the law of cause of reaping and sowing. Uh, so there's some truth to this, but the problem is uh, they don't understand that Job is not a guilty party, and that's not the cause of his problems. No. Um, Go, go ahead before I go on. Yeah, this passage fit. Yeah, uh, well, well said. This passage 15 is, I think, telling. It says he has swallowed down riches, and he has and, and vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. I wonder if is this a reference to Job and his wealth? Maybe he's making an allusion to Job. Hey, look, you rich man. You know you're not doing right by God because you're concerned about your money. You know maybe this is part of it, huh? Huh? You know, what do you think? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you think this passage is kind of an allusion to that? Yeah, I uh, I, I hold the position that uh, the entire chapter is directed to Job personally. The the concepts are broad, uh, broadly true about sinners as a whole, but uh, they're zeroing in on Job. They're pointing the finger. They're definitely him. Every statement applies to him, and and that's why he does take it personally. When you when we read his answer in the next chapter, you'll see every every time one of his friends uh, goes on one of these tirades against him, he takes it personally and he defend, defends himself uh, because he you know it's it's against him personally. Mm. Okay. All right, I'll go on. Uh, it says uh, uh, verse nineteen: For he has oppressed and neglected the poor. 
he has violently taken away houses which he did not build because he knew no quietness or calm within him because of his greed. He does not retain anything he desires. There is nothing left of what he devoured, for therefore his prosperity does not endure. Um, and yeah, we, if, we know, if we keep in mind that Job is a very wealthy man, and along with his family and his health, he did lose all his wealth. And, you know, if you've read the whole book, we know that God restores all this in the end. But, but at this point, when they're accusing him, this applies directly to Job. Great wealth, and they say, hey, you don't even get to enjoy it. You don't even get to enjoy your wealth. You know, it's being vomited out, or, and you can't even enjoy it. You know, you're that's very right. These, these are very personal. They're really trying to dog Job down. They're trying to break him emotionally. They really are. I see that now. Uh, but, but in your comment made it all the more clear. Uh, they really are trying to break his spirit. Uh, these people are up to no good. I mean, it's not just they have the wrong ideas. I, I think that their mot their motivations are very very bad. And there could even be. Uh, I, I I think it's. It seems to me pretty clear that there's a satanic element involved here as well. That the, the, their in, their arguments. Are, are, are they have influence they're being whispered to in their ears by demonic forces remember Jesus said even to Peter get thee behind me Satan was it, was it Peter and and so uh, here these two guys are and they might think that they're well-meaning they might actually believe that themselves but I, I see demonic forces at hand here trying to break Job's spirit and convince him to break his force because after all remember what say this was uh, Satan uh, telling God you know I, I'll break this guy and you watch he'll give up surely these fellows are under the influence of Satan they're his toys and he's trying to use them to do that very thing brother Eric what do you think Wow, that's very insightful, Brother Evan. Uh, and we did confirm that in previous chapters when we uh, uh, directly uh, connected their doctrine to uh, modern-day work salvationists. And we know that is from the devil. Okay, back to you guys. Well, you know, I've... I've uh presented this uh, in, the, in the previous studies here, I made it personal because I, you know, I, I can imagine how Job is feeling. I've, I've never gone through that kind of an ordeal where everything is lost, your health and, and uh, your family and your, all your wealth and everything. And this is one, th one of the things about the book of Job that's so helpful to us today is perspective. No matter what we go through, we can look at Job and, and and compare it and say, well, it's like when I was getting out of the hospital and I was feeling so bad about all my problems and complications, and then I heard across the hall a doctor tell a patient in the other room, uh, the test came back and you have cancer. You can have chemo and radiation, but it's probably not going to help considering your age. And, and that just put, gave me perspective. It's like, you know, we, we're... we're all sad because we have no shoes until we see the man who has no feet. And Job gives us perspective. But I've, I have I look at these friends of Job. I call it, keep repeating and saying they're so-called friends. And I, I've had a lot of friends personally here in Las Vegas, lifelong friends. I have, uh, I have friends on YouTube, some that I thought were my closest friends. And I felt the same kind of a way that they have turned against Job I've had the same kind of reaction with some people. I don't know, Brother Evan, if you've gone through that, if you've had that kind of feeling about, you know, what you thought were true friends and how, well, friends like that, I don't need any enemies. Yeah, I've been there. I've had that happen to me. All right, let's go on then. Um, Uh, no, verse 23, when he fills his belly, God will send his fierce anger on him and will rain it upon him while he is eating. He may flee from the iron weapon, but the, the bow of bronze will pierce him through. The arrow is drawn forth and it comes out of his back after passing through his body. Yes, the glittering point comes out of his gall. Terrors march in upon him. Complete darkness, misfortune, is held in reserve for his treasures. 
and unfanned fire will devour him. It will consume the survivor in his tents. So um, they are not only saying everything that's happened to you so far, Job, you deserve it. But yeah. in addition to that, more is going to happen to you. Uh, okay, let me go on in, in this verse 27. The heavens will reveal his wickedness and guilt, and the earth will rise up against him. The produce and increase of his house will depart with the victors, and his possessions will be dragged away in the day of God's wrath, this is the wicked man's portion from God and the heritage decreed and appointed to him by God. Okay, let me get your final responses to this before we go on and read Job's answer in the next chapter. Now he's brought God into it. Uh, I mean, directly. I mean, instead of all these other things he's saying, uh, now he's brought God into the uh, to the thing. And if you'll notice, I'm looking at this in the King James online, and I'm seeing from verse 22 to 29, I see the uh, I see God mentioned three times. So God, God, God. Also, oh, now he's throwing out God. You know, he's all this other stuff, but now he's using the word, uh, you know, saying God, God, God. Well, he's really trying to pound it home, isn't he? <laughs> um, okay. Uh I, I like, I'm a KJV firstist, so I always want to read it first in the KJV, uh, but I think that it, it works better if the entire chapter, see each one of these chapters going now for probably five, six, seven chapters that, that we've covered, are each chapter is a speech in itself. A friend makes a speech against Job, Job makes a speech as his answer. So I'm expecting this next chapter is Job's answer to this accusations. And it should be read as one speech. Um, uh, Brother Evan, do you feel like reading that in the KJV for us, or I'll, I'll read it if you don't want to? Sure, sure. Go ahead and read the whole chapter, the next one, and let's listen carefully. Okay. Chapter 21. Okay. But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolation. Suffer me that I may speak, and after that I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is it my complaint to man? And if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me, and be astonished, and lay your hand upon your mouth. Even when I remembered, I was a, and remember I was afraid, and trembling taketh hold of my flesh. Wherefore, wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mightier in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not. Their cow calveth and their casteth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not the, in the land. Their, the counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? How, oh, how oft, and how oft? Cometh their destruction upon them. God distributeth arrows in his anger. They are as stubble before the wind and his chaff before the storm carrieth away. God layeth up his iniquity for his children, and rewardeth him, and shall he shall know it. His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what pleasure hath he in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? Shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judgeth those that are on high? One dieth in his full strength, being holy and eased and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, his bones are moistened with marrow, and another dieth in the bitterness of his soul, and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts, and the devices which ye woefully 
wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, Where is the house of the prince? And where is the dwelling place of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? Do ye not know their token, that the wicked is reserved unto the, to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? Or who shall repay him what he hath done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave, and shall remain in the tomb. The clods of the valley shall be sweet unto him, and every man shall draw after him, as there are innumerable before him. How then comfort ye me in vain, seeing in your answers there remaineth falsehood? Mm -hmm. He's pointing out uh, the, uh, he's pointing out the heirs of their there now he's he's giving a rebuttal a, a strong rebuttal hello guys just want to say hi uh, hey, oh, Preet. Oh, uh, uh, now all I know is this is Preet and I don't know if you like to be called sister Preet or what how you want to be identified well, you guys can just call me Preet that's fine Okay, Preet, I'm glad you joined us. Uh, I've been listening to you very carefully on Brother Johnny's uh, Hangouts, and I really think you're doing a wonderful, wonderful job. I'm uh, glad you could drop in. Uh, well, not going to be going on too much longer, but uh, we're, we just read the 21st chapter of Job, Job's answer to his uh, accusers. Okay. And, uh, do you, uh, did you hear it? Do you have anything to say uh, about it before we, we go into it more thoroughly? That's okay. You guys carry on. I just joined in, so I'll just uh, uh, join in if I need to say anything, but I just want to hear what you guys are talking about. It's fine. Uh, all right. One of the, one of the things that, that uh, we've been saying now for, you know, much of this whole study on the whole book of Job is that the, the doctrine that the, the wicked will suffer for their wickedness uh, the law of reading and so on. It, it, it's true, it's biblical. And, 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 uh, you know, we do you're cutting point. out. Uh, is anybody else hearing that? Yeah, you're breaking up, brother. Uh, what can I do about it? Can I like, restart or something? Or you think that will help? I, I don't know if it helps or not, but there's an icon up at the top in the middle. Of, you know, of the hangout there where, where the microphone and the camera icon are. There's one that says adjust bandwidth. I hear some people say if you turn it up, you get better. If you turn it down, you get better. You might experiment with that. Okay, I, I just uh, lowered it to the middle. It was on top. Is it better now? Mm, seems about the same. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me do this. Someone taught me this the other day. I think it was... Um, uh, who was it? Neil. Neil, he taught me F5, I think. F5, click on it. Uh oh, he dropped? Yeah, no, he's going to refresh the window. Oh, okay. He's refreshing the window. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Is that any better? Oh, better. Oh, huh? yeah, much better. Okay, yeah, I just restarted it. So, Brother Neil, thank you for teaching me that trick. trick. Um, all right, so, uh, Brother Evan just read... Uh, chapter 21, it's an entirety in the KJV. Um, I'm a KJV first, just so I want to look at the KJV first, and then I, I, I like looking at the Amplified uh, as we go through it, because it amplifies it. It's kind of like what we're doing. As we're talking about it, discussing it, we're amplifying it in our own words. So uh, we'll go through it more slowly now, but it's important to understand that there is some truth in this, that you know there are consequences for wickedness and sin, for us, because we put our faith in Jesus, you know, at least we do not have the consequence of hell. We're, we're guaranteed eternal life. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we are spared the consequences in this life. If I if I lie, cheat, and steal, it's going to catch up with me, and I'll lose friends, and I'll, new, I'll lose, uh, maybe go to jail or something. So there's still consequences. So that's the true thing that we learn from this. But the problem uh -huh. is they think that Job's consequences... Job's situation are the consequences of his sin, and they don't realize it has nothing to do with Job's bad behavior. It's mm -hmm. not reaping what he's sown. He, he, it's, a, it's this uh, agreement between God and Satan to, so that you and I can be talking about Job's faithfulness today. Uh, before we go up more one at a time, let's say hi to Brother Neo. 
No, oh, hey, Neil. Hi, yeah, Neil. I, I added him to the hangout because I was in his hangout. <laughs> hey, my brothers and sisters. How's it going? Brother, brother Neil, did you happen to hear me talking about you a minute ago? I guess he didn't. I don't know if he's still there. Okay. Yeah, yeah I did. All right. Uh, so, okay, before we go on, any broad, anything broadly you want to say about this, his whole answer before we go through it one verse at a time? All right. No, no, not really. No, not really. Okay. Um, 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 Brother Luke, I, um, I, there's another hangout that I've been invited to that uh, is a subject that uh, somebody has kind of given me a challenge to discuss. I okay, think brother. I'm going to take up that challenge and I'm going to go in there. So, All right, very good. <laughs> I, I, it's been a pleasure to be in here as, uh, for as long as I was. And uh, thank you uh, so much. Keep doing what you're doing. And God All bless right. you. Brother, keep up the good fight. Bye. Thank you. Okay, let me go through this. Uh, uh, I'm going to read it uh, in the uh, Amplified, a verse at a time, uh, not necessarily a verse at a time, but more slowly, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, try, to, we'll try to get uh, uh, break it down a little bit more completely. It says, uh, it, it, now the, the Amplified puts subtitles in. The subtitle shouldn't be confused with Scripture. It's just the commentator or the, the translator's uh, uh, idea of what this chapter is about. So this is titled, Job's Dialogue Regarding the Wicked. It says, Then Job answered and said, Listen carefully to my speech, and let this be the consolation. Bear with me, and I also will speak. And after I have spoken, you may continue to mock me. As for me, is my complaint to man or about him? And why should I not be impatient and my spirit troubled? Look at me and be astonished and appalled and put your hand over your mouth. Uh, so let me stop there. And again, the, 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 the format we've had over probably the last six or eight chapters is a friend of his accusing him and then Job in the next chapter giving an answer. And that's, that's what we see happening here. Uh, but so what's your reaction to the first few verses and of his answer? Well, Brother Luke, he does go on to uh, state a bunch of uh, biblical, uh, factual, doctrinal statements. And then he sums it up in the last verse. He uh, calls them out for their falsehoods that he's they're pointing towards him. Okay, uh, let me go on then. And it says, uh, um, verse 6, Even when I remember, I am troubled and afraid. Horror and trembling take hold of my flesh. Why do the wicked still live, become old, and become mighty in power? Their children and descendants are established with them in their sight, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, and the rod of God is not on them. His bull breeds and does not fail. His cow, cal cow calves and does not miscarry. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children skip about. They lift up their voices and sing to the tambourine and the lyre and rejoice to the sound of the flute. They fully enjoy their days in prosperity, and so go down to Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead, in a peaceful moment. Yet they say to God, Depart from us, for we do not desire the knowledge of your ways. Um, now, what kind of a philosophy or, or doctrine do we get from what Job, Job says there? Well, we know about the doctrine uh, that he's talking about, uh, the prosperity of the wicked, and uh, they will prosper uh, for a while. But the Bible promises that we will see uh, their destruction. Okay, back to you. Well, we also uh, we also know that uh, the opposite. The that the, there's a question that people ask us all the time: Why do bad things happen to good people? Um, my surgeon. Uh, uh, he, he asked me that a few months ago, and I made a video just to answer him. And because that was his argument against faith in God, 
And so, um, but that, that's, a, that's a question we all have received. And we all, uh, I think we all are care, uh, you know, capable of giving an answer for that. But that's really kind of what Job is saying here. He says, these p people who are evil, they, they prosper, they have long lives, and they go down to the grave peacefully. So the question we all wonder about, or at least the, the world as a whole asks, is why do the, 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 the bad people seem to be blessed and some of the, the good people, they have all these problems. It just doesn't seem equitable and fair. Um, so uh, what's the short answer to that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I would say that uh, as I tried to answer my, my surgeon in, in that video, he, he said I that, can uh, give a little bit of an answer to that. Uh, all right, good. I'd love to hear it. Go ahead. Okay, so I mean, for me that really goes back to uh, God not being impartial. And what I mean by that is God says, I shall make it rain on the just and the unjust. Now imagine a world where only the good prospered and the evil all uh, the evil people always just saw bad. We would say God's being very partial. It's like all the good people are prospering, the evil people are just continuously being punished. I mean, it's like he's showing favoritism. So I believe God makes it rain on the just and the unjust. And sometimes, you know what, especially when it comes to God's own people, they there, there will be trials. They will go through trials, but God will never give you a greater burden than you can endure. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And we that. do live in a fallen world. Unfortunately, there's some things that we just, we, we can try to understand it, but I don't think we can fully, exhaustively ever understand it until we're there in eternity with God. Yeah, <coughs> I, I think that's all true. And the, the thing is that um, the, the false premise of, of the question, why do bad things happen to good people? It's, it's a false premise because we know that no one is good, only God is good. Uh, now, man is relatively good in man's sight. Like, you look at some people... Yeah, actually, yeah, that, that should have been the first answer, is that that is an assumption, <laughs> the goodness of man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we know that uh, the only goodness that really matters is the righteousness that's imputed to us when we put our faith in our Savior, Jesus. Uh, all the other goodness that, that man looks at each other uh, and, and judges, oh, well, the Pharisee said, I'm so happy I'm not like these other men because I do this, I do all these good things, I'm not like them. But uh, when we compare ourselves to each other, then we get relative goodness. When we compare ourselves to Jesus, perfection, we all fall short. So uh, they say, well, good people don't deserve these bad things. Well, no, we say we all deserve it. We're all, we're, none of us are good. Uh, the best of men is like fully rats in the sight of God. Uh, but uh, as you said, sister, we, uh, uh, it rains on the just and the unjust, and the rain sometimes is a good thing because rain is a blessing for our crops, and sometimes the rain is a bad thing too because it floods and destroys things. So uh, uh, that's, the, that's kind of the basic uh, uh, situation. But with Job, what's happening here is he's presenting this idea that some of these evil people they live long lives and they don't have all these cursings and things that he's gone through. He lost his family, he lost his wealth, he's got wealth from the soles of his feet to the top of his head, and he's saying, he's bringing up that philosophical question that we all have to deal with in apologetics and evangelists to tell people like Jesus. We all have to deal with that question. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can read the rest of this and get a final reaction. Do you want to expand on that any further before I read the rest of the chapter, John? You, uh, you uh, managed to uh, have a problem with the audio. Okay, let me, let me, I'm going to restart it again. 
okay, he'll be right back. But uh, remember now. Oh, here he is. Okay. All right. Hopefully, it's going to last till the end of the broadcast. Is that quality better now? Much better. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, do, is there anything you want to say before I go on to reading the remainder of the chapter here? All right. Let me go okay. on. Then. Let me go on then. Uh, let me see. Uh, Verse 16, but notice the prosperity of the wicked is not in their hand, in their power. The counsel of the wicked and the mystery of God's dealings with the ungodly is far from my comprehension. How often then is it that the lamp of the wicked is put out and that their disaster falls on them? Does God distribute pain and destruction and sorrow to them in his anger? Are they like straw before the wind and like chaff? that the storm steals and carries away? You say, God scores away the punishment of man's wickedness for his children. Let God repay him so that he may know and experience it. Let his own eyes see his destruction and let him bring oh, the wrath What's that? of the Almighty. What verse are you on? I'm on verse 20 right now. Let his own eyes see his destruction and let him drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Oh, oh no. you're cutting out again. Oh, yeah. Let me finish reading. Or maybe three would like to read. Okay, can you read the rest? First part of verse 21, the balance of it. Hang on. Um, uh, I was actually warming up food. I don't have it open in front of me. Okay, go ahead, Eric. Verse 21. For what pleasure hath he in his house after him? When the number of his months is cut off in the midst, shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judgeth those that are high? One dieth in his full strength, being wholly at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. And another dieth in the bitterness of his soul, and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which you wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, Where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he hath done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. The clouds of the valley shall be sweet unto him, and every man shall draw after him, as there are innumerable before him. How then comfort ye me in vain, seeing in your answers there remaineth falsehoods. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, all right. So, um, some people watch these these broadcasts here, like pick it up in this video, and they didn't see all the previous videos of the previous chapters. So, um, it's 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 necessary to constantly kind of re uh, rehash some of the things. We everybody needs to understand that. Um, the Job's so-called friends and even Job himself were not privy to the meeting Satan and God had. And, and so they don't even understand really what's going on, really. The, his friends are accusing him and saying he, he's, he's getting what he deserves. Job first says, no, I didn't do anything to deserve this. And then his friends weaken his, his resolve and he says, maybe I do deserve it. But, but he, his faith in God, his love for God remains intact. Job understands that he says his sins were put into a bag and sewn up and closed. So he understands, like as we do, that um, you know, our, because of our faith in God for our salvation, God's taken away his sins. And so uh, that's the situation that, uh, that we, we're looking at here. Uh, and I assume that it's going to go back, continue going back and forth with these arguments against Job, pointing the finger, and Job's answer. But uh, we've also got coming up here pretty soon uh, where Job will have a dialogue directly with God that, that will be fascinating too. 
Um, any final remarks on this chapter before uh, we make the closing remarks here? Oh, well, I really enjoyed those last two chapters and uh, all the input that we got from uh, uh, all the, uh, the panelists. Okay, back to you. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, the, as we study Job and John and Proverbs and early church history, these are the themes that we are, we're spending our time on right now. Um, it, it's great to learn all this history of the world and all these theological questions and answer them, but there's one question that remains uh, of utmost importance that's essential, and that's the question, what do I have to do to get saved? If you want to go to heaven, what is required of you? Uh, if you've never asked yourself that question uh, now in the past, I'd be surprised, but this is the most important question you must resolve in your life. Most people think they're going to go to heaven if they've earned it. They think heaven is a reward for living a good life. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we cannot work our way to heaven. It's not based on personal merit. If you want to go to heaven, the Bible says there's one way to get there, and that is to reject personal merit and put your faith in, instead in Jesus Christ. So that's what we want to ask you to do now. Don't believe in your own ability to work your way to heaven. Instead, believe that Jesus is your Savior, that he is God who became a man who died for your sins, and he's raised from the dead, and that resurrection proves that he's God, and he has the power over life and death. He promises you life everlasting if you put your faith completely in him, no longer trying to strive and work your way to heaven. So please do that now, and join us daily for these broadcasts, 7 p.m. Pacific time daily. And I'll close the live broadcast out, but first let me give Preet and Eric a chance to say any final thoughts and, and their uh, goodbyes here. Well, it was good to see Neo and uh, Pre and uh, Evan. Uh, uh, we welcome every all believers to come and fellowship with us. And those who don't know the Lord, uh, we've shown you the way of salvation according to scriptures. Please, today is the day of salvation. Uh, don't put it off. Okay, back to you guys. Okay. If uh, Preet is, is not too busy uh, cooking the dinner, then I'll give you a chance to say good night. Otherwise, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you can join us again in the future. Um, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ. <laughs>